Good morning. What is the fruit of unconverted thoughts? Today we're at Jeremiah 6, verses 16 to 20. Thus says the Lord, stand in the ways and see and ask for the old paths where the good way is, and walk in it. Then you will find rest for your souls. But they said, we will not walk in it. Also I set watchmen over you, saying, listen to the sound of the trumpet. But they said, we will not listen. Therefore hear, you nations, and know, O congregation, what is among them. Hear, O earth. Behold, I will certainly bring calamity on this people, the fruit of their thoughts, because they have not heeded my words, nor my law, but rejected it. For what purpose to me comes frankincense from Sheba, and sweet cane from a far country? Your burnt offerings are not acceptable, nor your sacrifices sweet to me. God called his people to return to the old paths. He sent Jeremiah to remind them of the way. He promised them the rest they needed. But they said, we will not. We're not going to listen. We're not going to come. Uh, we're going to explicitly reject everything you throw at us. Take that. That's what they said to God. God sent watchmen to warn them in his kindness toward them. But they said, in your face, we will not. They had set about constructing their own reality. And they weren't going to hear anything else outside of the reality that they, uh, reality as they wanted it to be. They imagined that they were advancing culturally, geopolitically, historically, you know, economically. They thought they were just advancing by doing it their own way. They still presented themselves as worshipers of the true God, but they had basically already written him out of the picture. And to this, God said, no, we're not going to do it this way. So God's going to make an example of them to the nations. Why are they being punished? Verse 19 makes it pretty clear, doesn't it? Hear, O earth, behold, I will certainly bring calamity on this people, the fruit of their thoughts, because they have not heeded my words nor my law, but rejected it. So they appeared to be worshiping God. They were going through the motions, but, but they were un actually effectively unbelievers. You know, in church every week, but unbelievers. There was a vast difference between appearance and reality. Self-deception is quite a severe spiritual problem. Sometimes our hearts fail to uh, warn us when they should. Other times our hearts inappropriately condemn us. And you know, you think, well, let's just be rational about it. We can trust our rational mind. But no, we can't trust our rational mind particularly. It's just about one of the few things we have. But, but everything's been affected by the fall. Emotionally, intellectually, we're very damaged. You know, we're compasses that don't always point in the right direction. So then what are the answers? Well, one of the answers normally is community. We need to seek out other uh, godly people who are, are urgently seeking the true God. And in community with them, we go together. So we have, we have a church board. We have, we have committees. We're trying to put, populate those with people who are, are truly believing God seekers. You know, Elisha connected himself with Elijah. King David listened very closely to Nathan the prophet. We need, we're better united with other God seekers than if we're just trying to do everything alone. Another important issue is to trust God absolutely. Remember Daniel and his three friends? The command was everybody bow down when the music comes. They refused and they were threatened, you know, you'll be killed. And they said, well, okay, we're just, no, we're not going to bow down. God may save us. He may not save us. We don't actually know for certain what his, his ultimate will on that is, but we will not bow down to your idols. And that went badly, but then it went awesomely. We need to trust God implicitly, and he'll take care of the rest. Whether we burn up in a fiery furnace, or whether God chooses to deliver us. We need to trust God and leave the results with him. That's what Judah in Jeremiah's day should have done. Question, can we learn from them? Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, help us to be learners. Judah was rebellious and had to learn the hard way. Lord, we pray that you'll help us to be learners wise learners and learn from their mistakes. Something that we can, humans can do very easily is get off into a corner and think that we've uh, invented the way to go. But please help us, Lord. We know that that's not the case. You be our guide. You be our God. And let us be your servants. Lord, we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. I believe God is ready to do that for you and me today, just as he was ready to do it for his people back in the time of Jeremiah and Judah. May we be surrendered to God and have different thoughts. You have a wonderful day.